At some point, you'll want to import music from sources, such as CDs or websites. Importing itself isn't difficult, but you should set your importing preferences before you add music to iTunes. In Windows, choose Edit, then Preferences, and select the General tab. On a Mac, choose iTunes, then Preferences, and select the General tab if it isn't already selected. Here you will find several importing options. The When you insert a CD menu allows you to choose the action to take immediately after you insert an audio CD. With the Show CD option, iTunes displays the CD when it's inserted, but does nothing else. When Begin Playing is selected, iTunes plays the CD when it's inserted. When Ask to Import CD is selected, iTunes displays a dialog asking whether you want to import the CD. When Import CD is selected, iTunes uses the current importing preferences and automatically imports the CD. Don't use this setting unless you're sure that you've set your preferences to your liking. When you choose Import CD and Eject, iTunes automatically imports and then ejects the CD, making way for the next one. This option is useful for importing a batch of CDs. Again, don't use this setting unless you're sure that you've set your preferences the way you want them. When you check the Automatically Retrieve CD Track Names from Internet checkbox, iTunes automatically grabs the song titles, artist names, album titles, and so forth directly from the Internet database of songs. It is recommended that you select this option, assuming that you're connected to the Internet. Also on the General tab is the Import Settings button. Click this button to go to the Import Settings window. This is where you define which encoder to use when you're importing. The setting pop-up menu offers different settings depending on your choice of encoder. For most music, you should choose high quality or better. You can change the setting if you want better audio quality for your music, or if you want to take up less hard drive space. Although you'll reduce importing speed, select the Use Error Correction when reading audio CDs checkbox. Error correction can be helpful if you're having problems with audio quality or skipping CDs. Not every skipping CD can be imported, even with error correction, but it might help. Encoding can be a complicated subject, but for now you only have to concern yourself with the encoders that appear in the Import Using pop-up menu. The encoder you choose depends on how you plan to use your iTunes library. The first option is the AAC encoder. AAC is recommended for all uses. However, AIFF and WAV are better choices if you plan to burn a CD with the songs you ripped, rather than play them on an iPod. Use the AIFF encoder if you plan to burn a song to an audio CD using a Mac. AIFF offers the highest possible quality, but it takes up a lot of space, about 10 megabytes per minute. Choose the automatic option from the setting pop-up menu for the best results. Don't use AIFF format for songs that you intend to transfer to your iPod. Convert them first to AAC or MP3. For songs that you plan to burn onto audio CDs and play on an iPod, use the Apple Lossless Encoder option. At about 60 to 70 percent of the size of AIFF versions, the files are just small enough that they don't hiccup on playback. Use the MP3 encoder for songs that you intend to burn on MP3 CDs or that you intend to use with MP3 players or your iPod. If you use MP3, it's best to choose the higher quality option from the setting pop-up menu. WAV is the high-quality sound format that's used on PCs, like AIFF, but it also takes up a lot of space, about 10 megabytes per minute. Use the WAV encoder if you plan on burning the song to an audio CD or playing it on a PC. Choose the automatic option from the setting pop-up menu for the best results. Don't use WAV for songs that you intend to transfer to your iPod. Convert them first to AAC or MP3.